Hello everyone. My name is Takahashi from Tokyo Gakuge University. This session is about the Giga School concept and high quality learning resources. And I would like to talk about it in 45 minutes. I would like to introduce our speakers. First, I would like to introduce our speaker, Ms. Komiyama from Recruit Marketing Partners Inc., Study Sapporo Education AI Institute, the Graduate School of Tokyo Gakuge University. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. The other speaker is Mr. Matsusi from NHK Educational. Hello. Nice to meet you. The three of us would like to talk about the learning resources of the Giga School concept while listening to the two of you. I don't know if this is going to be an abrupt transition, but I would like to give a slide. This is a slide from the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology of the Giga School concept. 461 billion yen, that's roughly 500 billion yen. If you consider that the national budget is 100 trillion yen, a huge amount of money will be invested in this project, but for what purpose? With Society 5.0, there is a lot of push to quickly create an environment suitable for education and individual optimization of human resources for the new era. From the local government's point of view, there is a lot of focus on the maintenance of the environment for each person, the maintenance of the school network, and how to use the cloud environment. It's more about how to use tools like the ICT environment or the cloud, which is a pretty big topic. Today, I would like to go beyond that and talk about the importance of content for learning resources, focusing on the topic of content. First of all, I would like Ms. Komiyama to speak for about 10 minutes. Yes, thank you for your time. Here are some slides. My name is Komiyama. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm currently working at Recruit Co., and I've been on secondment to Tokyo Gakuge University since last year under the cross-appointment system. For a detailed profile, I've posted the QR code on Twitter at the bottom right, so please take a look. As for Recruit Co., we started an online learning service called Study Sapori in 2012, which currently has 1.4 million paying members with unlimited access to 40,000 videos in 18 subjects in 5 subjects. Thank you so much. We also have adults watching our videos. In particular, they seem to be watching English videos in preparation for the TOEIC. As you all know, the year 2020 was a very turbulent year for education. Originally, it was called the Great Reform of Education, and it was a year of revision of the guidelines of study for elementary schools. Programmed learning became compulsory, English became a subject, and many other things, but in addition to that, Giga schools were brought forward since the start of COVID-19. Until now, Japan was behind in online education. This is from an OECD survey. However, because of the start of the COVID-19, online education has spread rapidly. The number of new registrants of Study Sapori from March to July exceeded 400,000. And we have heard that the number of new registrants is increasing not only for us but also for other companies. So I think this alone shows how fast it is spreading. In the age of new morals and the expansion of online education, I have five questions about how school education is changing. I believe there are five elements. Today, I would like to talk about the first one, the spread of individualized learning, and the changing roles of schools and teachers. 
In the past, the role of the teacher was to teach 35 or 40 students, but with the spread of Giga schools, each teacher will now have an individual device and will be able to use it to teach the students. If you do this, then you can tailor the class to each student's level of proficiency. To introduce an example, Kosei Gakuen High School has been conducting a class that is not taught. In English grammar classes, they watch videos of study sapori at home, and then their classmates and fellow classmates explain to each other about it, and then they decide the best presenter. In the meantime, what the teacher is doing, he would ask the students what the teacher was doing here, and he would go around to see if they were making good progress or if they were stopping somewhere. In this way, as Giga progresses and individualized learning becomes possible, co coaching skills are necessary for the teacher, and I believe that the ability to observe is very important. Another example is from Dushisha Junior High School, where each student has had a device since 2014. They have had the device for quite some time, and this is the first year they used Zoom for their summer vacation assignment. I think everyone when it comes to summer vacation assignments, the teacher would assign them. And they would work hard on them on August 31st, and then hand them in on September 1st. In the case of Dushisha Junior High School, this year, they didn't do it like that, but rather, they used Zoom for summer vacation assignments. And even after the assignments were turned in, there was a lot of communication between the teacher and the students. In the case of Mr. A, who is in the first year of junior high school, he wanted to write a report on railroads and history, and we decided on a theme. After that, the teacher asked the students what the history of railroads is in terms of the world, and the students looked it up. And the teacher presents a book and the students read it. In the meantime, if any student's progress is slow, the teacher, noticing this, asks the student why he or she is reading a little too slowly. I'm trying to read the whole thing from the beginning. The student said to him. He advised him to look at the table of contents first, and then only look at the necessary parts, which would make it more efficient to look at the book, which he did. Why not look into the relationship between the railroad and war? So, Mr. I originally thought that railroads had nothing to do with the war. But he said that the quality of the report was much better than last year's report because his knowledge and knowledge expanded and he was able to include it in his report. For the observational skills needed by teachers, by advancing the GIGA, each one of us can absorb the data of what the teacher has been watching by himself or herself. This is the part on the left. For example, the data shows when students are learning, whether they are making good progress, whether they are doing very well in social studies or science, and so on. I can give advice to the children based on that data. On the other hand, there are some observations that only a teacher can make. For example, you can spend more time focusing on the students' facial expressions and pay more attention to their health and well-being. Or you can look at their clothes and pay attention to whether their home environment is okay. I think that with the spread of online, we can focus more on observations that only the teacher can make. The role of the teacher is shifting from teaching to coaching, and the ability to observe is becoming more important.
I am also the chairperson of the Japan Business Federation's EdTech Strategy Study Group, so I would like to say that Japan Business Federation is also active in the digitalization of education, and they published a proposal in September that calls for one unit for each high school student, and if these three things work, the human resources we need will be able to succeed. By promoting the use of edtech, the evolution and efficiency of education will be improved, and inquiry-based learning will be enriched. For this to happen, it is important to prepare the environment, especially the hardware, software, and human resources. For hardware, the Giga School Plan calls for the provision of one device per student in elementary and junior high schools, and it has been suggested that high school students should have one device per student. Also in terms of software, which relates to today's talk about content, we have proposed to the government to expand the cost allowance. Even if it is a one-time subsidy, if it is only for one year and the local government doesn't have the money, it would be a waste of money if the children want to continue the program in the second year. We are saying that we are going to ask you to do it in the fiscal year. Also, free digital textbooks. Lastly, in terms of human resource development, there has been an ICT support program for some time, but the definition of the Giga School was not appropriate. I would like to see this expanded a bit more, and since it is too cheap to hire people from the private sector as supporters, we would like to see this expanded. I would like to conclude my speech. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Could you give me a little slide, please? Thank you for the compactness of this report. I would like to look back again at the 1.4 million users of the study Sapori, which is amazing. That's about the size of the entire population of the prefecture, which is a bit like a medium-sized prefecture. So, you have quite a few people studying on study Sapori now, and after COVID-19, you had 400,000 people. Yes, from March people. to July, 400,000 plus. It's expanding rapidly. That's a lot of momentum. I think these learners are starting to really feel the benefits of individualized learning based on data. I think that as this becomes more and more apparent, the role of the teacher is shifting from teaching to coaching, especially with regard to the learning situation, and although we have done things like observing facial expressions in the past, I think it's time for the teacher to be able to understand the situation based on data and to accompany the students. Things like that have come up. I think there was some talk about that kind of thing. It may not have been a topic of discussion. But the fact that you wrote about how studying with this kind of thing enriches inquiry-based learning means that this kind of AI drill, or study Sapori, in particular, is not so much about exploration as it is about the acquisition. Is the idea that it is effective in situations like this? It is also content for exploration, but at the moment there is more academic content than for exploration. For example, the Kojimachi Junior High School in Tokyo's Chiyoda Ward already had one unit for each student before Giga, and although it wasn't a study Sapori, it had other content installed. In the math class, they completed the class in half of the prescribed number of classes when taught at individual proficiency levels. So, there is a possibility to shorten arithmetic, mathematics, and English, which are considered to be accumulative subjects. If it becomes so, there is a possibility that the subject study will be finished in the morning and the whole afternoon will be free. So, I think that there will be more opportunities to have classes in the afternoon for inquiry learning, political science, finance, money, and entrepreneurship, and sex education, which were not available in schools until now and for which there were few opportunities, and also for entrepreneurship and sex education. I see, the students will be able to understand what they have learned, they will be able to see the data. 
and in that sense, they will gain more and more confidence, and in that sense, not only will they want to spread their wings and explore more and more, but they will also have that image in their mind as they listen. I find this diagram interesting, it just came out, didn't it? Listening to Ms. Komiyama's talk now, this is actually a slide of Ms. Komiyama. You can see this graph at the bottom left. Can you explain two mountains? Until a long time ago, the mountains of academic achievement were considered to be an Arabian camel. And there were a few students who did very well and a few who were a bit behind, and most of them were in the middle level. But recently, the CAC club has become a Bactrian camel, and teachers don't know which academic level to teach to which level of proficiency. So I think the widespread use of GIGA will solve this problem. I think we can call it progress. It's quite symbolic that in the Valley of the Hump, there is a sign that says, all classes. I also feel like I'm teaching a class at a university. I'm not sure if it's a good fit for the students who are doing a good job of it, but from the point of view of the students who are doing a good job of it, they're asking me to say something more difficult. And if I pause and talk about the pauses, then in the end the class doesn't fit everyone perfectly. So, I spent a lot of time explaining to them that if you use this kind of software, they'll be able to get along just fine. Of course, it takes a long time for a child to get there, and I think there is a difference in the strength of each child. Some kids take a long time, and some don't, but still, it's not the kind of software that compares with others, but the kind of software that challenges yourself in the past and keeps improving. I was listening to it, thinking that the more you do it, the more power you get, or maybe the software makes it easy to feel that. There are some points that are easily misunderstood. When we talk about a PC or a device, people tend to misunderstand that we are not talking to anyone, we are doing this all the time. But the Kojimachi Junior High School, for example, says that a mutual learning experience occurred. Because of that, each student's level of proficiency accelerated, and everyone mastered the math class in half. So, rather than doing things in silence, it seems that children who don't understand are taught by those who do understand, or the same is true in this subject. But in other subjects, for example, in science, the children are taught by those who don't understand, or teach them. I think it's easier to talk to them because they can see what they don't understand on the screen. It's easy to talk to them, I think. I think it's easy to understand. By the way, Mr. Matsusi, you seem to shake suddenly, do you have a story to tell? Like what I'd like to hear. If not all of a sudden. What kind of effort did you make to get it to 1.4 million people? I don't think that just because COVID-19 was popular doesn't mean that it's going to go down well. Without the hardware, no matter how much you want to play it at school, you can't do it. So, I think you're right that Giga is a tailwind. In that sense, in the last part of your speech, Ms. Komiyama said that the maintenance of the ICT environment and content should not just be done in the spotlight, but should be done continuously, but if you had to reiterate that, would you have any more arguments? If this is the case, it would be a dead-end situation, and I feel sorry for the children who are interested in the program but can't use it. 
視点とっていうか、うん、せっかくその興味を持ったのに使えないっていうのがかわいそうだなと思うので、うんまあ、どの別に二人喋るだけじゃなくて。So I think it's not just study Sapori, but also other programs. It doesn't matter if it is content or not. I would like the government to make a budget for a multi year software contract. I see, there may be junior high school, high school, and elementary school teachers listening to this. But I would like to ask them if they can really improve their academic skills by studying with study support. And will I get into the high school of my choice? I know you might have some nasty questions like that, but I think you've probably been asked a lot of those questions. How would you answer them? I think that you still need an accompanist. It's called a study support equals study supplement, so it's a supplement. So, I think most of the kids need an accompanist. I think that only the top 5%. Or 10% of the kids who can do it on their own are able to do it on their own. So, it's not only the teachers, but also the parents. So, if they study together, and the child is studying, and the parents read while the child is not studying, they will say, Mom and dad aren't studying, so why should I be the only one to do it? However, I have a boy in the first year of junior high school, and I would like him to study with me at home, and I would like him to study next to me. No matter how good the software or content, it is still not a magic wand, and although it takes a certain amount of effort on our part, it is a very effective tool compared to what it was before. I think it's okay to use it that way. I think it would be good if you can start there, and then use it as if it could be used here, too. I've been listening to that, too, and I think it's a good idea to start with that, so that you can use it here, too. But I think it's a very difficult battle to learn. At such times, parents and teachers can work together as an accompanist at the side and get rid of that pain in a short period of time with high quality content and explore and study more advanced topics. Well, I was listening to the lecture, thinking that it was something like that. Yes, thank you very much, Ms. Komiyama. I'd like to stop here for now. Now let's hear from Mr. Matsusi. I would like to conclude this slide first. High quality learning resources that correspond to the Giga School concept. But But it is embarrassing to say that we at NHK equals Japan Broadcasting Corp. are providing high quality learning resources, so we put it in the title, aiming for. My name is Matsusi. I am currently on secondment to a subsidiary of NHK, which is now a joint stock company called NHK Educational. At NHK, I was in charge of school education programming and also produced the NHK for School Video on Demand website. Before that, I worked as an art and technology research engineer at an NTT research center. I will try my best to shorten the time I have to talk today. I've chosen about nine. It's okay. Please take your time. I have chosen nine things. Today I'd like to talk about our NHK for School website, and in particular, I'd like to talk about science related content. The one in green is the one that existed before COVID 19. Next, the orange one is a series of contents for home based learning that was started when the school was closed at COVID 19. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the future. Let's start with an overview. This is the NHK for School website. Mainly elementary school, junior high school, and then high school is grouped as middle and high school. We also have a little bit of information on kindergartens and nursery schools. In terms of program series, there are about 70 series. In terms of the number of episodes, there were about 2,000 videos. It doesn't seem to be able to compete with Recruit Co. at all. Up until about five years ago, They said they had the largest number of videos in Japan, 
but in the blink of an eye, they were overtaken by Recruit Co. We have a total of about 9,000 videos, including 2,000 program videos and 7,000 short themed clips, which are called resource videos. It's a VOD site that offers educational videos, but it specializes in educational videos, and there is no membership ID system, and we don't charge for them. It's paid for by NHK subscription fee, and schools are exempt from the subscription fee, so you can watch it without having to pay for it at school. The main part of the service is video, but what are the science programs available today? I would like to reconfirm that there are 21 science programs here. There are 21 programs from elementary school to junior and senior high school, and in elementary school, there are three series for each grade, from left to right, 3 for 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 3 for 3 from left to right. There are a total of 12 series of videos just for elementary school students. There is the Endless series on the left, which is based on the new guidelines, the Mysteries of Many series from the previous guidelines, and the Great Survey series, which has various names. Why didn't you make them only for the new guidelines? In order for teachers and children to use them in a variety of learning situations, we have subtly changed the way we make them so that they can be used at the beginning of a unit, or at the end of a unit to help consolidate knowledge. This is an old series in the new guidelines, but I would like you to consider how to use it and show it to us. I would like to ask you to think about how you can use them, such as Active 10 and the former 10 Minutes box. The selection of 100 video clips is easy to understand. As I mentioned earlier, the 100 clips are good for each grade level, and we have selected them for each unit. As I mentioned earlier, there are 7,000 video clips, or 3,000 in science alone. I thought it would be terrible to tell a teacher who wasn't a specialist in science to pick one. Then we have two or three clips for this unit. I've narrowed it down to 100 per grade level. So why don't you start by showing us the 100 iron plates? This is a proposal. This one is a little different in color, but it's called, Manasugoizuken equals Amazing Pictorial Book, a series by Teruyuki Kagawa called, Insects of Awesome, in which Mr. Mantis appears. This project is a tie-up with that series, and each time I took a picture book featuring the insects that Teruyuki Kagawa goes to catch. In the Observing the Grasshopper episode, I took a real grasshopper, took still images of it in all kinds of 360 degree angles, and pasted them onto a modeled CG. That way, you can see the real thing more clearly than the real thing. It's like looking at the real thing through a magnifying glass, but if you take a fingertip and make a close-up of the belly like this, it'll look like this. Each one is accompanied by a video at an important point. It's exactly like a 3D interactive picture book. In fact, I was told directly that it's popular with young friends in kindergartens and nurseries, and I was happy to learn that it's being used in unexpected places. The next one I'd like to introduce is the Rika map equals science map for elementary schools, and I've lined up the old guidelines for elementary schools. As well as the science learning items for the middle school curriculum guidelines, which are just about to be finished. 
reload. This is the world we live in. The top right corner is the Earth, celestial bodies, and the bottom right is the field of life. Mother's belly is big. The bottom left is energy, with roller coasters and magnets. The top left corner looks like a kitchen, but it's a chemical field. If you click on one of the circles, for example, here in the mountains, volcanic activity and igneous rocks are studied in junior high school. This is actually a capsule, and on the right is a list of 3000 NHK for school science clips that correspond to this unit ID, which can be viewed in this UI. Now, you can see the active 10 video right away. This is the middle school where volcanic activity and igneous rocks are concerned. And if you follow the bottom of the page, you'll see this area of middle school. There is a section on land composition and stratigraphic sprawl. But if we go down a little further, it is probably around the fifth grade science level. There is rainfall and flood and upstream and downstream of a river. I'm sorry, it got torn off. The Rika map is a way to see the connections between science studies from elementary school to junior high school in this way. So, you made a map. NHK for school, which had been working on this project since before the COVID-19, started a series called, Let's Learn at Home, right after the school was closed during the COVID-19 crisis. NHK for school, as we call it, was designed to allow teachers at schools to select a variety of teaching materials and show them to children in class, or to give children the opportunity to try them out as assignments, but we started this series at home, while they were at home during the school closure. As NHK for School is named for school, we asked the teacher to make a playlist for us to look at and use to do these assignments. This is still going on. I asked the teacher to make a playlist for us to use at home, to look at this and do these assignments while we are at home for school recess. We don't have any closed schools or continuous playlists anymore, but we have continued this playlist since the summer in case we cannot go to school in November, or if we have a temporary closure, or if we have to close schools or classes, or if we have to change grades. Next, there is a program called, Let's Study Together. The students are asked to send their reports to NHK, not to the teacher. We asked the teacher to submit the paper as us, and the NHK to take a photo of the program with their cell phone and send the scanned data to us, so that we could post it in this way. It was a project that was quite hard on the kids, and we asked them to share what they liked about the program and what they found out about it with everyone. But when the school was closed due to the COVID-19, we received hundreds of submissions. It's amazing. I was keenly aware that people must have wanted to send out something they had done, something I wouldn't be able to do if I were them. After that, I even made a worksheet at NHK. Watching the program, before and after the program, and introducing it in science, the sixth grade students were asked, why is the moon shaped differently? How would you go about doing something like this at home like the teacher does in the classroom, in a school where you watch a program that says, try this kind of thing? This is made under the supervision of a school teacher. If you study this at home, if you expect to do so at home, this is what you should expect and think about. It is now available in the paper but in PDF form. There are two major issues that we have to deal with.
There are two major issues that we have to deal with right now. Codification of the courses of study, and, utilization of educational data. And in the area of utilization of educational data, there is talk about, study logs, and, big data in education. By responding to these two topics, I hope that NHK for School, which has a stock of 9,000 videos, or a place to store educational materials, will be connected to various other educational services and create more value. We will continue to promote the Giga School concept in this era. They will come out to the outside world. Rather than enclosing them, I would like to think about cooperation with the outside world. That's all I have to say. Yes, thank you very much. Can I have my slide for a moment? With the Giga School concept, schools that have already introduced machines are already beginning to use NHK for school to view social studies content on the left side of the screen, and then use sticky notes to summarize the readings in this way. I think we're starting to see more and more use of this type of content. I've seen this done with half the screen, so I've launched two apps. That's right. This one is in the browser, both of them are in the browser. But this one is, Google Jamboard. Yeah, I try not to say anything about the products. I'm sorry, but it's just Jamboard. If I may summarize your story, I think it is one of the world's largest educational contents provided free of charge. There are 12 series of science clips. 12 series in elementary school alone. If you go to middle and high school, there are 23 series. That's a lot. That's 3,000 video clips. I don't know if I've mentioned it much, but it's got a lot of program videos, material video clips, and teacher instructional materials, right? There were also instructional plans and worksheets. There are a lot of teaching examples and photos in the book, so it's really easy to teach. And there are also playlists for students to learn at home, not just in the classroom. It's a wide range of music that can be used in a variety of situations, whether it's for introduction or retention. So if you're having trouble deciding which one to choose, you can start with the 100 standard ones. As I've been getting to know the people at NHK for a little while, I've gotten the sense that they make their programs with exploration in mind. That's why I get so many letters. For the last three years or so, we've been on an internal quest. It's a quest. That's why the program has been an exploration, I guess. If you look at it a little bit, if you think about it in terms of teaching, if you think about it in terms of the flow of the class, if you think about it in terms of the 45 minutes like this, in a conventional NHK program, it's like the teacher teaches, the program teaches, and then the teacher teaches again. That's the current video clip, with the program and video clips. In the case of the video clips, even if it's shown, it doesn't really complete the big lesson of teaching, so the video clips flow by adding up the teacher's teaching act in blue. It's like the teacher's presentation of teaching materials when he speaks, so it seems to be used in this way. So, for example, the way the teacher talks while zooming in on the material or showing the teacher what he or she is going to say. For me, the way the program content is presented with a storyline is completely different from the way the video clips are used to create a lesson. Which one is more popular with teachers? Whom? Those who are not yet used to teaching with video images tend to start by simply inserting the program into the 45-minute program, with the teacher before and after it. 
ポップ45分の中に入れてみようっていうところからは始められるのが多いです。ただ、えっと、そうなってくる。However, when they do so, teachers who are quite experienced in setting up their own classes will, as Mr. Takahashi said, use the clips to further increase the depth of their classes. Perhaps depth. For that purpose, you use clips or have the students find activities that reinforce their ideas among multiple clips. Clips are a popular choice for teachers who want to develop more advanced lessons. The example shown at the beginning of this article is probably from this side, or perhaps it's not clear how to make it work as a learning tool just by showing the content, but the teacher's guidance is added and somehow it maintains its teachability. For veteran teachers and teachers who want to do their best to create classes, this kind of usage is quite popular. This kind of feature is one of the characteristics of NHK's content, which can be used for all kinds of things. And, as you said at the end, it's compatible with the codification of the guidelines, right? In fact, if you think about it, I'm here on a job at the University of Arts and Sciences to discuss the use of educational data for the Ministry of Education and Science, and we are discussing coding. I'm working as a teacher training group, so I'm here today for this kind of work, and it seems that you are thinking about how to use this kind of data as a teacher. Do you have any expectations or difficulties in this area, or do you have something you want to tell your teacher? Whom? Actually, we've already handled 9,000 videos, but internally we can't manage them unless we have some kind of ID that tells us which unit in which grade and subject in which curriculum guidelines. Actually, we do have one. We have to link it to the code presented by the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. Actually, what we have internally is a more granular code than the one from the Ministry of Education. In terms of the unit, we have a code that could be used for either the introduction or the development of the product. So the codes that have been given a little bit of leeway as an option for the future will be used by the companies to coordinate them. If you can do it well, it would be even better if you can match the video here with a textbook, whether it's before or after a chapter of the unit, and so on. That's both a challenge and an expectation. I see. It would be great if there was information about the teacher's teaching behavior and the teacher's learning guidance, as well as the code. That's a lot of things you've said. I would like to ask you some more questions, but Mr. Matsusi, I would like to close the discussion here for now. Thank you very much for your time. It may not be the same story so far, but I would like to summarize it a little bit in my own way, and then I would like to end by asking you both about your expectations for the future. May I have the slides? It is the cultivation of quality competencies and the use of ICT. The vertical axis represents individual knowledge and higher order qualifications. If you write this in a diagram, this kind of knowledge is gradually networked from the individual knowledge, like structured knowledge, and is placed on the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis, it's like repeated learning. 
This is even rougher, though, because I've only written about two cases. I put a little bit of proactive, interactive, deep learning. If you ask me whether we use proactive, interactive, deep learning in this kind of situation to acquire individual knowledge, I think repetition and mastery learning is better. At this point in time, there is talk of using AI drills and ICT for this kind of thing to be quite effective. I think this is where NHK's storytelling programs could be located. The other thing is the ability for higher order qualities. The ability to think, judge and express oneself, and for such things, independent, interactive and deep learning. In short, complex and comprehensive learning activities, not simply repetition, but complex learning activities such as discussing, being refuted, expressing, and summarizing again, are necessary. I think this is where ICT can help. This is where the use of ICT as a tool is necessary, and I think the worksheets and video clips with a high level of materiality prepared by NHK can be found in this area. I don't know if this wasn't mentioned today, but like NHK's NHK for School app, I think the use of ICT to share information and distribute materials and indirectly contribute to the development of qualitative skills is in the blue part of the program. Actually, this blue part is easy to do, so I thought that the Giga School should start from here. I've been thinking about this for a while now, but it's not a topic of conversation. Today, I myself was listening to the Giga School concept, simply put, and I was wondering if there is such a thing as the use of ICT. We have less than five minutes left. I have less than three minutes left. I talked a little too much. I would like to conclude with a word or so from both of you. Can you start from Mr. Matsushi? Mr. Matsushi and Ms. Komiyama, please. With each student's own device and NHK's content, the creativity and ingenuity of the teachers will come into play. It would be great if this kind of lesson could be taught at school and at home. The NHK for school videos could be used at such times. I would like to make it easier for people to use NHK for schools videos. Thank you very much. I mentioned study Sapori for online learning, and I hope that by using them, teachers will have more time to spend on their students. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much. As for the ICT environment and the development of content, it has become quite complete, so it is now up to the learners and instructors to be creative. I think this will be an issue in the future. Of course, both Ms. Komiyama and Mr. Matsushi have told us that content providers will have to work harder and harder in the future. There are many problems that cannot be solved by schools alone. It's a good idea to work with people like this to achieve a good performance in the Giga School concept and to make a difference. We had a very short but very deep talk at 45 minutes. It's a very good thing. Thank you very much. That's all I have to say.